Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Mission Church. Uh, my name is Nick Hester, pastor here at Faith Lutheran Mission Church. Is that you, Spencer? You got, you got something for me, too? Oh, that's a nice truck. Good morning to everyone sitting in our pews. Good morning to everyone who is watching us online. Just a couple of announcements for today. Um, probably still the session after, um, okay, good. Got a question and answer session after the service today down in our fellowship area. Got nothing major, just an informal site in case you got any questions about uh, what's happening here at the church, the decisions we make, and overall vision. So it's just a very uh, informal thing. Just hang on afterwards during your coffee if you feel some inspiration for uh, with some questions. Our uh, council will be more than happy, more than happy. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Especially Mary Ann, she loves us too. Thanks, Tom. And that will happen during our fellowship time downstairs. Council meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. All are welcome. Come on uh, by and see how we carefully make decisions for the church functions here. Today is our last uh, talk on our sermon series, Getting to Know God. And we're talking about our loving God and everything wraps around really that. <coughs> starting next Sunday, we're going to be starting a sermon series on the Apostles' Creed. We're going to take that baby apart. From the top down to the bottom, just like in the old catechism lesson. <laughs> so, and we're going to uh, be studying the Apostles' Creed for nine weeks. All right? It's going to be a fun. There's a lot of good stuff in that. And that's awesome because we say the Apostles' Creed every Sunday, and it's going to help us understand the words that we're saying. Other good stuff in the uh, for announcements in the bulletin. Be sure and check that out. We'll read that. Our opening hymn for today is, we're going to be working on the blue hymnal for the first song, and that is, I was there to hear your morning cry, number 770. Uh, I'll go ahead and start you on that, and uh, just uh, join me. <coughs> I don't know. You guys ready? Here we go. Stand up and rise as you are able, and let's sing to the Lord. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there. Thank you. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we sin, we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are our own to sin, sin and, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for us, and for His sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of Lutheran congregations and mission for Christ, and by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. you. You guys want to try and sing this without uh, accompaniment? All right, here we go. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of our fall and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. See the is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and
We give you the glory and honor of being our omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, faithful, sovereign, and loving God. Help us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit to reflect all that you are through our everyday lives that was made manifest through your Son, Jesus, as the one God who we worship and glorify. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today's first lesson is a reading from the third chapter of Zephaniah, verses 14 through 17. <laughs> Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the Lord will remove his hand of judgment and will disperse the armies of your enemy. And the Lord himself, the King of Israel, will live among you. At last, your troubles will be over, and you will never again fear disaster. On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up, Zion. Don't be afraid, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. The psalm today is found on page 232 in the Green Hymnal, Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. I'll read the first verse and you can respond. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like great deed. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They, they feast upon the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Our second lesson today comes from the fifth chapter of Romans, verses 3 through 8. We can rejoice too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Here ends the reading of the lessons. Please rise for the gospel as you are able. more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who 
do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you all Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> Our last topic for our Getting to Know God sermon series is about our loving God. Because love is an essential attribute of God and the pinnacle of his personality. Now, the great theologian, A.W. Tozer, who's probably forgot more theology than I'll ever know in my life, he explains about God's love as well with these words. I can no more do justice to this awesome and wonderful topic than a child can grasp a star. Still, by reaching toward the star, the child may call attention to it and even indicate the direction one must look to see it. And so I stretch my heart toward the high, shining love of God so that we may be encouraged to look up and have hope. Great words from A.W. Tozer. Now, the Bible tells us that love is the supreme expression of God's personhood and flows out of his goodness. And it affects all of his other attributes. In the New Testament, there are three primary words for love. We have eros, love, which is a romantic kind of love. We have a phileo love, which is a friendship kind of love. And then we have agape. Now this kind of love is a sacrificial and unconditional love. Our culture today is primarily focused on a, a romantic or friendship kind of love. However, God's love is agape. The purest, deepest, and most unconditional kind of love. If you were to do a word search in the Bible, you'd come up with, for the word love, over 550 references. Here's just a few of the verses. Take a look at Psalm 36, verse 7. How precious is your unfailing love, O God. And go up a few Psalms, to Psalm 63, verse 3. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. Now let's take a look at Isaiah, chapter 38, verse 17. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. If we go up into the Minor Prophets up to the uh, book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17, Scripture says this, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Let's head up to the New Testament. Way in the back of the New Testament, we're going to take a look at the first book of John, chapter 3, verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. And then our closing scripture, John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. <clears throat> so what exactly is the love of God? Human love is generally a response to the conditions and circumstances around us. We love because someone pleases us and makes us feel good. By contrast, God loves us because that's the kind of God he is. Nothing in us causes God to love us. One 
of the clearest passages in the New Testament on God's love is in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. In these three verses, the Apostle Paul focuses on the death of Christ as the supreme manifestation of God's love. And he says it with these words. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let's break this passage down by looking at four truths about who we are and who we were. The first truth is that we were powerless. Now, verse 6 tells us that, that without Jesus, we are powerless. This word in the New Testament is usually applied to the sick and the feeble and to those who have been wiped out by some kind of a disease. Specifically, it means that we have no power to come up with a plan of justification on our own and if we're left to ourselves. It's the first truth, we're powerless. The second truth about who we are is also from verse 6, and that's uh, we're on, we were ungodly. This word ungodly comes from the Greek word asedes, which means a lack of reverence and also failing to honor what is sacred. The word ungodly indicates that we were irreverent and have deliberately withheld from God what is really rightfully His. The third truth we can see in verse 8, and that is we were sinners. This means that, that we were desperately in need of a change that we couldn't make and even really didn't want to make. We were neither righteous nor good when Jesus died for us. And we had, we had totally missed the mark. Now the fourth truth is even stronger, and it's found in verse 10. We were enemies of God. Because we were powerless, ungodly, and our sinners, we were considered to be enemies of God. Now, I realize this isn't a really very popular teaching, especially when we're focusing on God's love this morning. Yet the truth is, folks, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, tell it like it is with these words. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. The reality is that we have rebelled willfully against God's commands, broken his moral law, and acted in total defiance of his known will for us. Now, if you're wondering why I'm hitting so hard on our spiritual condition this morning, well, let me tell you why. First, it's in the Bible. And this is what the Bible teaches about us. Second, it helps us understand the depths of God's love for us. And third, it helps us to see that, that we don't have any claim on God's love. And we don't deserve it. God's love is not dependent on, on anything in us because there is nothing in us that can force God to love us. 
there really is no reason for God to love us. Let's face it, we're just not naturally lovable persons. Sin has infected our lives so much that, that it's distorted even the parts we think are beautiful. And so, there's no reason for God to love us except this incredible truth. That's the kind of God He is. He loves us because God is love. And He can't help loving us even when we are His enemies. God's love is greater than our sin. And He loves us in spite of our sin. So now that we've established the truth about who we really are, let's take a look at God's incredible solution to our impossible problem. Romans chapter 5, verses 7 through 8, reveals the unconditional nature of God's love. Take a look at verse 7. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. Each of us is probably willing to die for some people. But probably not for a bunch of people, and especially those we don't know. This verse is telling us that God's love is not like that. God's love is much greater. And God went far beyond what we would do. Verse 8 tells us, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The emphasis in this verse is on the fact that we were still sinners when Christ died for us. The wonder is not that Christ should die for us, but rather that he should do so while we were still powerless while we were ungodly, while we were still rebellious sinners, and while we were enemies of God. Jesus didn't just die for his friends. He died for his enemies as well. He even died for those who crucified him. Friends, any time we are tempted to doubt God's love for us. We need to go back to the cross. If, if you really don't believe that God loves you, think about this. If God loved us enough to give his son to die for us when we were his enemy, he definitely loves us enough to care for us now that we are his children. Think of it this way. When you need to ask, Lord, how much do you love me? God will answer this much. Then his one and only son stretched out his arms, bowed his head, and he died. So what should we do in response to our loving God? The first thing we should do is Love him wholeheartedly. If we take a look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 37 through 38, it kind of raises the bar for us with these words from Jesus. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The Bible makes it clear that if we say we love God, then we better put him first by obeying him. Our second response should be to love others. Way back to the first book of John again, chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible tells us this. Dear friends, since God loved us so much, we surely ought to love each other. Our love for God should lead us to love others who have been created in his image. And this involves serving those we claim to love. Remember that second commandment from Jesus 
in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. Love your neighbor as yourself. The third response to our loving God is that we should love ourselves. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3 says this. Long ago, the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. A Hebrew word used here for the word drawn is the word mashach, which translates into me to be a prolonged and drawn out extensively. God has, a, has an intense prolonged and drawn out love for each one of us. God loves you and accepts you as you are. So there's no reason to dislike yourself when your creator has demonstrated his unconditional love for you. You have a tremendous value and breathtaking dignity as a child of God. Friends, on the authority of the Bible, you need to know that God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Max Lucado says this about God's love for you in his book. This is actually the name of his book. God thinks you're wonderful. Max Mercado says this. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. If he had a wallet, your photo would be in it. He, he sends you flowers every spring and a sunrise every morning. Face it, friend, he is crazy about you. Okay. Oh, those are the easy responses. Now let's take a look at the fourth response to the lavish love from our loving God. Love our enemies. Jesus tells us, commands us. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. There was a Baptist pastor who was a friend of George Washington and lived in a small Pennsylvania town during the American Revolution. In that same town, there was also a man who constantly opposed and humiliated the pastor. His name was Michael Whitman, and he was plain an evil kind of guy. One day, Michael Whitman was arrested for treason and sentenced to die in Philadelphia. The city of brotherly love, go figure it. When the pastor heard about it, he traveled 70 miles on foot to plead for the life of the traitor. Now the minister went up to George Washington and asked that Mr. Wetman be set free. And Washington said, No, Peter, I cannot grant you the life of your friend. The preacher shouted out, Friend? He's the worst enemy I have. Washington was flabbergasted and said, What? You walked 70 miles to save the life of an enemy? That puts the matter in a completely different light. I'll grant you your pardon. The pastor took Michael Whitman back home that day, no longer as an enemy, but as a friend. What about you today? Is there... Anyone that comes to mind that who's difficult for you to love? Anyone in the church you might have a conflict with? God forbid. The Bible is clear that we are called to an unconditional love. Just as Christ loved us when we were at war with him, so too we are to love our enemies. And how do we love our enemies? We pray for them. Even though we are being persecuted by them, we still need 
to pray for them. I know this is tough, folks. Well, our Lord Jesus commends it. We are to pray for peace and God's Holy Spirit to guide their, their lives according to His will. Which means we can't and shouldn't be praying for our will to be done. Friends, we can't start deciding what is and what isn't applicable to our lives from God's holy word. Otherwise, we're, we're no better than they are. So if Jesus said this, but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who pray for you. If that, Jesus says that, then that's what we have to do. Fourth response, love our enemies. Next, our fifth response to our loving God is that it's going to compel us to tell others. Take a look at the second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 14. The Bible tells us this. Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. And so because of this compelling love from God, verse 20 then proclaims this. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Because we have been the recipients of God's incredible love, we are then called to be ambassadors of that love and share it with others. That's why we partner with missionaries to take the gospel around the world. And that's also why we support the great ministries here in Chippewa Valley as well. Folks, we need to be so moved by God's love that we want to tell others about our loving God and what he has done for us. I want to close today by reading a very moving passage of Scripture from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. And it really brings the truth about our loving God. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is re revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Father oh God, we thank you. We thank you that you are our loving God. Help us, Lord, as we go out the front doors in our mission field, Lord, to spread the word and tell others about your amazing love for us. An amazing love that, that, that is so profound that you sent your one and only Son to earth here to live with us, to be with us, and to ultimately die for us. Lord, help us. Stand strong upon that holy truth 
That is the absolute manifestation of your love, and that is through your Son, Jesus. And it is in His holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is Day by Day, still working on the blue hymnal yet, number 7. Four, six.
to their needs. Lord God, we thank you for your love. Lord, help us to express that love to all the people that are around us. Not, not only the people that we know and love, but those maybe we don't love so much, Lord. It's still about your love and showing that love through us. Help us, Lord. Give us that strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we thank you for your healing touch. It's all about your love. We've got walking miracles in this congregation today, Lord, due to your awesome love. And Lord, there are still people who are in hearts and minds that, that could use you to overwrought for coming down now and touching them. Lord, send your Holy Spirit down now to all of those we are thinking of on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we, we pray for healing for those people that we know. But Lord, we pray for this nation too. Lord, Lord, we've turned away from you. But as a congregation, we promise to pray for this nation. We promise to pray for this nation's leaders and we turn back to you, Lord. And that we become, again, still one nation under God. Because it is, it is still in you that we trust. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all those soldiers that are fighting in far off lands, far from their families, fighting for those freedoms we have here, Lord. Protect them, Father God. Protect them, keep them safe, Lord. Bring them home, reunite them with their families, Lord. Help us as a nation to support them as they've supported us for so many years. Help us with their transition back into society, whether that's with jobs or, or with uh, healing. And that can be in body, mind, or spirit. Help us, Lord, to help them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, we pray for all those soldiers that are fighting on the streets out there, serving us. Lord, all those law enforcement personnel, fire department personnel, ambulance drivers, first responders, even emergency room personnel, Lord. Protect them, Lord. Keep them safe. They're, they're out there serving us, Lord. Help us also as a community to support them in the jobs that they do. Keep them safe, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 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 Lord God, we especially pray for those soldiers who are fighting on the front line for your gospel truth. All those missionaries that we support individually and as a congregation, Lord, keep them safe. Protect them, protect their health, Lord, the health of their families. Protect them from any kind of human evil. Protect them from any kind of evil of Satan. And Lord, provide them with the resources that they need to do those ministries you've called them to. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they'd like to make at this time, please go ahead and say that. Into your hands, O oh Lord. We commit all for you, for those who prayed for our Lord and those who prayed for in our hearts, trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace of God with one another.
join in thanksgiving with what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy.
Let us pray. Now by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the benediction. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine his amazing love upon you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is Be Thou My Vision. Still working out of the blue general yet with one voice. Number 776.